Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. How are you, Twinkle? Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You're from Dhar? Yes, sir. Dhar, a lot of mahals are there, I think. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, there are mahals in Mando, which is a very famous architectural heritage site. And there are famous mahals like Rani Rukmati Mahal, Baz Bahadur Palace, Hushan Shah's tomb. Okay, just tell me one or two stories which you published, motivational stories. Uh, so I worked on uh, two fronts. Firstly, uh, I published some stories in COVID during the COVID pandemic time. So there were stories which focused on how the community came forward to help people who were suffering from COVID and their uh, families who were facing difficulties to deal with the challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, one story which I would like to tell you is about uh, an old person. He was 80 years old. And despite his age, there was no barrier to him. He distributed more than 1000 food packets in a span of two months, going everywhere in every hospital and the makeshift facilities that were there. Okay. okay. Just tell me what is the difference between act of God, act of state and act of parliament? So firstly, act of God refers to a situation or event which is not in control of a particular individual or entity. Secondly, act of state is uh, the actions done by the government or the ruling uh, regime and uh, it is done usually as per the laws and regulations of the country. And thirdly, act of parliament confines to the act of legislature. How it is made? Act of parliament? So, Act of Parliament is uh, through the debates and discussions in Parliament, the legislation passed by the Parliament. Think. Okay. And State Act? First I asked Act of State. State Act? Uh, Sir, so State mostly confines to the executive and the government. And the... Uh, no, no, they also have, they don't have, they don't, they don't pass any act like Parliament passes? So, they are the part of the Parliament as is done are in the part of parliament. So executives are part of legislature. State act, when we say state act, like parliament, act of parliament. Similarly, states also pass act in the legislature. So how they are part of parliament, that is parliament is in the central government and act, uh, state, they have their legislatures. Uh, sorry, sir, I misunderstood here the state as the general term state, which we use for the government as that, a whole. That you replied? Yes, sir. Eh? Act of state that you replied? I was asking then state act. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> See, a uh, uh, lot of activities taking place in Gandhi Nagar and one annoy that one ambassador told that uh, Gandhi Nagar is a ghost city, hmm? ghost town after office hours. You heard about it? Sir, I am not aware of this particular situation. I will have to read about this. Okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, can courts interfere with interfaith marriages? Sir, I think interfaith marriages are a matter of personal choice of an individual. So, when it comes to exercising the liberty of a person in that marriage, I think it is a matter of, that is confined to the individual itself. But if such interfaith marriages uh, involve activities like coercion and forcefulness on the part of the individuals, so I think keeping the larger public interest in mind, the court can at times interfere. Even if the parents uh, go to court eh, and request the court to stop that marriage, can they do that? Uh, so I think uh, no, uh, th this will not be good on the part of the court. Uh, have you heard the name of Prashant Bhushan? Yes, I have heard. Who is he? Uh, Sir so Prashant Bhushan, he, uh, was, he is a lawyer and he was convicted of contempt of court recently in past two years. That's all? You know in that context only? Convicted? Yes, sir. Uh, his father? You know his father? No, sir. I don't know. He is also a famous personality? No, sir. I don't know. From emergency times? Sir, I don't know. Yes, sir.
What is Madhya Pradesh in news for in the last one month? Uh, so very recently, it has been in news for the violence, which is an unfortunate situation between the two communities, especially in areas like Khargon district. Uh, so this is what I can remember of recently. Prohibition? Uh, no, sir, I don't know. There was an incident where an MP attacked a liquor store. Are you familiar with this? No, sir, I'm not familiar with this. Uh, Bihar and Gujarat already has prohibition in place. Do you think it should? It is something that uh, should be implemented in MP as well from a socio-economic perspective. So I think that uh, uh, when I see the facts and statistics, when it comes to Madhya Pradesh, uh, there are not such incidents like alcoholism or related activities. So uh, the policy that UP and Bihar took were more based on that uh, on the. Uh, violence that happened due to the use of alcohol and the informal industries there like toddy makers. So this kind of activities are not prevalent at such a large scale in Madhya Pradesh. Hence, uh, there is no effective measure yet to tackle this. Okay. How has uh, the Bhopal gas tragedy shaped our disaster response mechanism? Uh, so after the Bhopal gas tragedies, work was done on, on various fronts. First of all, uh, stepping up of the safety plans in the industries and especially more vulnerable industries like chemical factories was done. Secondly, the compensation and rehabilitation of the victims was fast tracked post the tragedy. Okay. What is the latest on the NSC controversy? It has been in news in the last two days. Uh, sorry, sir, please. NSE sorry. controversy. You're familiar with the NSE controversy? Uh, no, sir, I'm not familiar. National Stock Exchange, there were controversies. NSE, also. okay, NSE. sir. Yes, sir. So I'm familiar with the controversy. So uh, it was alleged that the chief officer of NSE is involved uh, with agencies outside the NSE who were giving directions. And also, there are allegations of corruption and inappropriate use of funds towards these personals. What is the latest on this controversy? Uh, so latest uh, today, uh, both these were jailed and the charge sheet was filed against the chief officer. What do you know about fractional investing? So I'm not aware of this term. Fractional investing, okay. Um, what are the biggest lessons for us from COVID? So the first lesson is collective effort. Collective effort at a local level, national level, as well as international level can only work if we want to eradicate this pandemic. Secondly, the lesson is that life is very fragile and we should make the most use of it because one never knows that what can happen. And um, so this is what I can. What is your biggest takeaway? How has uh, collecting this anthology shaped your personality? So uh, the most important thing that I learned in this anthology is a positive outlook. Though at times we might not be well, uh, we might not have enough capacity to deal with challenges. But when we see the situations with positive outlook, it certainly affects us in a better way when it comes to dealing with the situation. Uh, GDP growth rate is in news. Yes, sir. Can you tell me why? Uh, so recently the IMF, to, uh, uh, projected India as one of the fastest growing major economy compared to the whole world. But at the same time, there were also news regarding the degrading of the projections of GDP of our country. Okay. Uh, IMF is also in news in the context of Sri Lanka. Yes, sir. An IMF bailout. Yes, sir. Right. Can you tell me how an IMF bailout works? Uh, what is the process and uh, procedures involved and the rates involved in this? Uh, so, in my limited understanding, uh, the country which needs help in the bailout, it uh, approaches the IMF. IMF gives funds to the country to deal with its challenges, but on certain conditions. The country has to open up its economy, reduce its fiscal deficit and welcome foreign investments in the country. Russia is also expected to go for a debt default. Yes, sir. What are the implications of uh, large countries like Russia going for a debt default? Sri Lanka is a small country. It would not have a larger impact on the global economy. 
But if uh, Russia goes for a debt default, how will it affect the global economy? So first of all, it will disrupt the liquidity of the countries from which Russia has taken debt. For example, North American countries and European countries. Secondly, a lot of countries depends on Russia for their input requirements and raw materials. So Russia might increase its rate or uh, uh, put forward conditions like it would need its uh, payment in a particular currency. So it might affect the whole currency exchange in the world. Uh, and thirdly, such a big player like Russia, uh, whose economy is rela related, is, it has economic relations with almost whole of the world. So it will affect the economy of other countries through negatives like increasing inflation and fiscal deficit. Uh, you practice zero waste lifestyle. Yes, sir. How do you spread awareness about this? So first of all, I try to uh, explain people that what is the positives of these kind of lifestyle. Secondly, I try to make them aware of the alternatives available of the things which we use daily and which can be eliminated in order to have a sustainable lifestyle. And uh, so thirdly, I also use social media to make aware people about the repercussions of having a huge amount of waste. Okay. And how have you practiced this? yourself can you bring out some snippets so at a personal level i try to minimize use of things like single use plastics i try to replace them with things like paper or a cloth bag even uh, when i study i have tried to make most of the use of laptops or making digital notes in apps like evernote rather than using a lar lar large amount of paper thirdly at uh, the local level I installed a platform known as Uphar Ek Nai Soch, where people can bring forward the things that they use and that is no more of use to them so that they can give to some other people for reuse. It can be clothes, it can be food packets. Okay, all right. What do you mean by single waste, uh, single use plastic? So single use plastic refers to the kind of plastic which has no alternative use once it is taken in use. So it cannot be recycled? So it can be recycled, but it cannot be reused. Also recycling, it has several challenges because of the thinness of that particular plastic. Okay, all right. Uh, and how do you create anthology of positive stories? And what do you mean by anthology? So anthology refers to a combination of stories of people. And I talk to people, the people share their experiences with me. And I try to make a story out of it. So right now I'm collecting these stories and I intend to publish it at some time in the future. Okay. Don't you think media should also, the popular media and the mainstream media should also publish more positive stories? Because mostly I see is negative stories. So I think a media at a certain level is doing such kind of initiatives. Uh, one that I can particularly remember is Indian Express uh, videos on YouTube in which they focus on women who have impacted their uh, lifestyle, uh, who have impacted a whole lot of people through their lifestyle. But at the same time, yes, media due to things like media trials or paid news or fake news might indulge in such kind of negative things. So these should be focused upon. Okay. You're a commerce student. Yes, sir. Can you tell me about the revenue collection data which has come out for the last financial year? Uh, so, when um, regarding the revenue collection data, there is an increase in tax collection as compared to the last year. Uh, what I can recall is the direct tax collection has increased by around 49% uh, as compared to last year. And in indirect tax, the GST has breached the 1.5 lakh crore per month mark in the recent months. Okay. How many taxpayers are there in this country? So we have around uh, 2 crore taxpayers. Only 2 crore taxpayers? Yes, sir. Direct tax or indirect tax? So direct tax. Okay, but taxpayers will include direct tax or indirect tax? Uh, sir, when we talk about taxpayers, we talk about direct taxpayers because indirect tax is already paid by every citizen in, a, in any in indirect way. So when we say that government is not utilizing taxpayers' money, so that would mean only direct taxpayers' money? 
so it includes direct tax payers like uh, individuals and companies in my limited understanding so this is i know okay okay all right what is the plan uh, what is the difference between tax evasion and tax planning so tax planning refers to the use of legitimate means and the incentives provided by the income tax act to reduce one's tax liabilities whereas tax evasion is the deliberate uh, evasion of tax by using uh, means like hiding one's income or showing unfair view of the balance sheet of a firm okay uh, you are inter- you have also done something with seva international yes sir what was uh, what is can you tell me something about this ngo so it is an ngo headquartered in new delhi and works in various areas regarding service to the humanity it works in areas like disaster management it worked excellently dealing with the covid pandemic and uh, situations like poverty helping communities like transgenders okay last question uh, can you comment on the waste management practices in india especially by the urban local bodies so the waste management practices in urban local bodies are uh, firstly the waste collection so i think there is, this is the point where we lack we are not able to collect a lot of waste in the urban local bodies secondly segregation practice and uh, around 50 to 60% of waste is only segregated in that to in major municipal corporations and thirdly it's recycling so recycling is also a setback and thus it ends up in landfills thank you so uh, twinkle yes ma'am ngo seva international okay uh, can you tell us the process of how to get an ngo registered in india ma'am an ngo uh, can register can be registered in india through various acts like societies act trusts act or it can be registered with niti ayog or the department of uh, under dpiit so uh, it is registered through fcra as well depending on the structure of the ngo so if i have to open an ngo can i directly go to fcra and get my ngo registered ma'am fcra registration is required when an ngo is involved in foreign funding so one can either directly go to dpiit so that it gets registered okay so but is there a process that you know you can only apply for an fcra or some other uh, niti ayog once you complete number 1 or number 2 processes so is there a process which one has to follow or one can just go to any of these and get this registered ma'am i'm not aware of that process okay. particular no problem zero waste lifestyle do you think it's practical ma'am uh, i think having a completely zero waste lifestyle is not practical because there are several challenges we do not have alternatives of a lot of things so i think uh, at least aspiring towards it makes us halfway there so anything which you feel that it's unavoidable ma'am um, one thing that i can recall is the use of contact lens which even i use so i do not find any alternative use of it and thereby i have to throw it anyway hmm um uh, make in india yes 2 plus 2 dialogue okay so is there any connect in both the things ma'am i have to read about that 2 plus 2 you know that between indo us this 2 plus 2 dialogue yes ma'am i know about the 2 plus 2 dialogue can you tell us about few highlights about these dialogue ma'am i haven't read about that i'll have to read about it okay there was a bill to raise marriageable age recently it was in news yes ma'am and uh, what was that why was it in news ma'am it was in news to increase the age of girls for marriage to bring the boys and girls marriage age at par and which is that a uh, 21 years 21 okay that happened last year but then after that again it was in news so there's a resistance and are you familiar with that and uh, that uh, you know uh, there are certain sections of the society who are resisting and who don't want this to happen uh, yes ma'am there is a resistance towards increasing the age because a lot of people Uh, believe in marrying the girl at an early age 
even we have seen cases in india where one third of girls are married at an early age and child marriage cases so even an age of 18 is at times higher for certain sections of the people and they resist for increasing it further so why why do you think uh, what is your view on that Sh- uh, should this uh, should the marriageable age should be uh, you know it should be there only at 18 or it should be risen to 21 Ma'am, I think that the marriageable age should be increased to twenty-one because of the following reasons. Firstly, it provides an adequate opportunity for the girl child to complete not only her school education but as well as education further in higher uh, studies. And secondly, it promotes ideas for empowerment of the gender in society. So, but you know, the resistance came in not only from uh, the people who are living in rural areas, but from very well-known activists also. So, what do you think could be the reason of this resistance? Why are they objecting to it? Ma'am, I'll have to read about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, coming back to commerce and costing. Suppose you have to price a product. You have to calculate a selling price. How would you do that? For example. let's assume it's the saree which you are wearing so yes, how would you calculate the selling price of it first of all ma'am uh, i would uh, think about the raw material that is used in making this saree that how easily it is available and what is the cost at which it is available secondly the labor that will be used in making these sarees and thirdly the expenses like the cost of setting up of a factory maybe should be assessed to uh, come to the cost price of the saree but this will be the basic price above it there can be other charges as well for example rent for example interest on loans taken by the particular entity so keeping in mind all these things i can come at a certain price of this saree suppose the factory is owned by you and it's not on rent then how would you calculate that ma'am even if the factory is owned by me there is an opportunity cost involved in the factory because had i not been using it for manufacturing the saree i would have let it out and earned an ample income on that so the cost will still be added to the saree and how would you calculate the overheads in that sorry ma'am overheads overheads of okay so would you not you will only take uh, 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 into the pricing whatever um, uh, you know the ingredients which you are using or is there any other cost also apart from that over and above okay uh, the other cost the fixed yes, cost yes ma'am there are indirect overheads that might be involved for example the transportation cost marketing cost or advertising cost so how do you calculate that is there a formula to it or how is it done ma'am usually it is done by uh, accounting the actual expenses and allocation of those expenses to the particular product it can be done on the base basis of the actual amount of units produced mm-hmm. or it can be done by bifurcating individual overheads okay a cardless cash withdrawal of atms from atm so uh, what is the significance of it ma'am first of all the ease and convenience with which we can withdraw cash secondly we won't uh, uh, there will be no hassle to carry a separate debit card or credit card for each bank every time we go to withdraw cash okay one last question suppose uh, you are an investor and you have to invest in a startup so uh, what all will you see in choosing a company for investing your money into it ma'am first of all i see i'll see that from how much time has the startup been incorporated secondly i'll see the area of work and its prospects in future that can affect the profit making capabilities of the startup and thirdly i'll also see the social impact that the startup is create numbers sorry ma'am would you also uh, look at the scalability numbers ma'am i think that num- looking at the numbers will uh, influence my decision in a negative way because startup being a startup and in initial stages does not reflect its true potential just by looking at its numbers okay fine thank you okay quickly <clears throat> our interview is over yes Overall performance is very good. Good communication skills, good pleasing personality, and good knowledge also. <clears throat> One is uh, little know little more about MP 
in current affairs mm-hmm. yes sir and i contact with other members i think you were i contact was with two members fourth member you were just uh, not looking towards just ensure that you look towards all once a while when yes, you are sir. responding to one mm-hmm. and uh, even i wearing contact lens that i wearing could have been avoided Okay. you are telling about the contact lens na no? you yeah. know say that i am also using contact lens okay and this current waste management practices i think you uh, went to drawbacks also just he asked you question that what are the current waste management practices yes, just sir. concentrate on that only. okay tax payers that was a deliberate question asked <laughs> he was not interested in numbers he was interested in how many Uh, tax payers are there whether you are including indirect taxes also okay, okay. Yes. everybody is paying tax yes one way or the other otherwise very good performance is your the risk yeah i think apart from the tax payer because tax payer is generally when we say tax payer it includes both yes, direct sir. and indirect but no, generally it doesn't include both okay. but it it meaning is that it includes everybody okay generally people say only tax payers are only this much Which is not correct. Yes. Sir. They mention of only about the ah, direct taxes. Yes, yes, yes. So that is it. But you have a pleasant personality, good articulation style. Uh, you were thoroughly calm and composed throughout the interview. So many positives are there. Keep on revising on the current affairs. I think well articulated, uh, very confident, pleasant personality. Uh, eye contact definitely could have been better. Uh, MP related current affairs. Uh, I think prohibition has been in use, and uh, just take a look at that. I think that's yes. what I would have expected. Stock market uh, NSE. You did not catch it the first time. I think. Uh, sir, I ordered NSE. Yeah. So okay. I was okay. looking okay. 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 for. This will get a lot of questions. This anthology of positive stories. I think uh, would get a lot of questions. All the best. All the best. Yeah, current affairs only, and especially two plus two dialogues was very yes, very sir. important. And uh, just read about it, marriageable bill and everything, because you being a lady, it is expected from you that you know they last the question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And news about specifically MP also. Yes, like, ma'am. Like Uma Bharati only that did that. Yes, ma'am. Liquor soap and all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.